Jack. Jack, you want to grab a brew? We're going down to Puffy's. No, I don't know, Chuck. What, my money's no good? No, it's just I got a Cub Scout project. It's my night with the kid. Oh. You do? Mm -hmm. Well, go and get it. Okay, Let's go. Going, Come on, I'm go, going, go. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> Am I glad you're home? You're the best. Oh, no, you're the best. Uh, what do we got for dinner? Oh, we have steak. We have potatoes. Uh, I'll get it. Oh, OK. Danny, when you're finished with that, would you please come help me set the table? Can I help you? You Jack Bishop? Yeah, I am. Who are you? Michael Lane. Jay, where are you going? We got the Martinez case in AP Narcotics. Chief Judge wants to see me. And anyway, you're reducing Martinez to a misdemeanor, right? Wrong. The lab results came in over 500 milligrams. So what? I can think of three DAs who did more coke than that at my going away party, and they all got promoted, not indicted. He offers an e-felony and probation. It's a misdemeanor, Mitchell. I've been there. Judge Bach, you wanted to see me? Yeah, it's good to see you, Miss Preston. You, of course, know our district attorney, Mr. Broderick. I'm pissed off at you, MJ. You and your grandfather. Really? And we're two of your biggest supporters. What is it, the Williams case? It's just that the old man stole you away from our office. I say forget about the family tree. You're a born prosecutor. Uh, enough with the BS. Please, have a seat. OK, uh, Miss Preston, uh, your firm has been on the homicide panel since uh, its inception, hasn't it? Yes, sir. And if I'm not mistaken, it's been quite a while since uh, you've taken a court appointment. Has it? Um, let me look. Don't bother. I want your firm to take this case. 
It's a very sensitive case, and you Prestons are known for your sensitivity. Talk to him, you and your grandfather. We want a fair trial. I can't believe they want us to take this case. This guy, this Lane, took a gun like some hitman and just ambushed a man in cold blood. That's a brilliant salvation, MJ, for the wrong side. And our side's right? Grandpa, for three years, I was a DA. And a darn good one. And I must have prosecuted over a 1,000 defendants. You know how many weren't guilty? Maybe 12. So if the guy is guilty, he doesn't deserve us? Is that your position? No, no. Every scale deserves a defense. But do we have to be the ones to give it? So someone can be too awful, too low, too guilty for the Prestons to defend? Yes, that's right. I mean, don't we have to draw a moral line somewhere? It's drawn already, MJ. It's called the presumption of innocence. But Michael Lane's already admitted that he did it. So we should just let the DA lock him up and throw away the key? Ugh. You know what your Uncle Don would say. Yes, yes, I do. I want to bring him in on this case. But Grandpa, he tried reality once. He didn't like it. You all have unique personalities and passion, even my friend Schumann here. But don't leave your passion outside the courtroom. Use it. Make it work for you and your client. For example, Your Honor. Mr. Preston. The... Go, Schumann. Well, isn't it true, sir, that sometimes passion isn't enough? Take the Shell Rhodes case, for example. No, you take it. Once was enough for me. Well, I thought you were brilliant, sir. Oh, well. And the jury should have ruled for you. Well, thank you, Shimon. Now I can sleep at night. Uh, see, no jury is easy because they reflect us and the society we live in. Ask yourself, what are the values we seek to uphold? And how does the law and our jury system reflect those values? Hmm? Yeah. Don't forget, next week, opening statements. And they better be good. Thanks for coming, Don. Dad, all you ever have to do is give me the time and the place. You have to wait for an invitation? You know, for a lawyer, you don't have much of a memory. You still on that? Forget it. You didn't lose the Cheryl Rhodes case. We did. It was a team effort. You saw my mistake. You pointed it out. Perhaps I should have held my tongue. You spared me. Perhaps I overreacted. The thing is, I don't like to lose. Well, neither do I, Dad. I became a lawyer because of you. I went to work in my father's shop. Yeah. Now you're a teacher. I like teaching. I'm happy. Now, uh, now Ken. Now, Ken was something to behold in front of a jury. Maybe even better than you. <laughs> you're not so bad yourself. your shot. It's your shot. This is a tough case. I need you. Mr. Lane, have a seat, please. My name's Donald Preston. I'm an attorney. Who sent you? Nobody sends me anywhere, Mr. Lane. I'm here because I want to be. Well, don't waste your time. Indulge me, all right? At least let me tell you what the prosecutor is saying, which is that yesterday afternoon at 6.15 p.m. in front of 351 West 95th Street, you shot Jack Bishop right in the heart. Why'd you do it? Jack Bishop. Was a monster. Why do you say that? Because I knew him. Mr. Lane, you've got a very tough DA here. He's gonna want to put you away for life. I did what I had to do. You don't care about your life? It's a waste of time, all right? It's just... It's hopeless. 
Nothing is hopeless with the law, Mr. Lane. The law? The law's what screwed this up to begin with. You could take your precious law, Mr. Preston, and you could shove it. Don't you feel any remorse? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm sorry I didn't do it sooner. Why did you kill Jack Bishop? You got to talk to me, Mr. Lane. Everything we say here is confidential. I don't give a shit about Jack Bishop or the DA or the judge. I'm here to help you get justice. But first, you have to tell me everything you can about the crime. The crime? You want to hear about the crime? I'll tell you about the crime. Six years ago, Jack Bishop raped my daughter, Tracy. She was eight years old, Mr. Preston. She was beautiful, and he raped her, and he sodomized her, and he destroyed her life. You had to kill him. I had no choice. You're concerned about justice, Mr. Preston. Well, rest assured, justice has been served. Jack Bishop is dead. But if Lane doesn't want a defense, why do we have to shove one down his throat? I'll tell you why. The guy's got a 14-year-old daughter who's in hell. She's completely withdrawn. She won't talk to shrinks. She can't cope in school. Except she did start having sex at 11 with anyone who'd look at her. She's been in and out of every psych hospital from here to Poughkeepsie. But didn't Jack Bishop do his time for that? Which is how things went wrong in the first place. Tracy Lane was Bishop's second arrest for child molestation. The first case was dismissed on a technicality. With Tracy, the DA was afraid that Bishop had beat it at trial. Hey, they cut a deal. Oh, yeah, and your old friends at the DA's office cut a pretty shitty one. Bishop was facing up to 25 years on the rape. They let him plead to a lesser charge in six years. He's back on the same block where he lived before, the same damn block. OK, that sucks, but the law is still the law. And Michael Lane is still some vigilante killer. I don't believe it's so open and shut, OK? We don't know everything that went down around this case. Now, maybe there's something more to this. And what if there's not? Oh, well, then the jury will convict him, they'll put him away for life, and you can say, I told you so, OK? Don't speak to me like I'm one of your students, OK? Because I'm not. Time out, you know, time out, time out! Now, look, you two have every right to argue and act like children in each other's presence. That's a family prerogative. But this is not the time or the place. Our client is about to be arraigned. Yeah, Dad, I don't want to cause a problem here, you know. I mean, I'm no, gonna, Don, I wanna, I Don, wanna, oh, oh. I ask you to join us on this one because we need your skill and your passion. And MJ, you're here because I think you can make a darn fine, even brilliant defense lawyer. It just happens that the two of you are related, and it is my hope and Michael Lane's hope that that fact doesn't work against us. His family needs our family. Okay? Yeah. Shall we go? Bunky. <sighs> I'm signing a full order of protection for your wife, Mr. Anderson, and I'm releasing you with all the cognizance. Judge, Mr. Preston. Uh, Mr. Broderick. My alpha brother. Jeez. Broderick's bringing out his heavy hitters, huh? Doesn't the chief of the Homicide Bureau have anything better to do, Johnny? Hey, what about you, Professor? <laughs> what is this, uh, student field trip, semester break? No, it's you. You're my hero, John. Next case! Step back, please. Michael Lane, step up. Michael Lane, step up, please. Michael Lane, dock at 97NO7212. Charged with murder in the second degree and criminal possession of a weapon. Appearances? Officer Vincent Broderick by Assistant District Attorney John Jackson. Donald Preston of Preston and Preston for the defense. Counselor, waive the reading. So waived. The defendant enters a plea of not guilty. What? No, 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 no. That's bullshit. Mr. Lane, please. No, no, no. Listen, I don't care, all right? That's I enough. Would... No, Judge, I did it, please. and I'm glad I did it. Quiet. Mr. Lane, I'm entering a plea of not guilty for you. That's the way the system works. Your Honor, the system doesn't work. Hey, That's hey. why I had to kill the son hey. of a bitch. Mr. Preston, control your client. May I have a moment, Judge? Take a few. You see her? She's taking down everything you say, and I assure you it will be used against you. I don't care. Well, that leaves one of us, and if I'm going to represent you, we do it my way. Yeah, well, maybe maybe I don't need a lawyer. Oh, trust me, Mr. Lane, you need a lawyer, a very good lawyer. But if you don't want one, fine. I'm glad I killed him. I understand, but do you want me to represent you, yes or no? This is the moment, Mr. Lane. 
Do you want to disappear into the void for the rest of your life, or do you want to get up in court and make your case with the defense? Mr. Preston? One moment, Judge. Because if you don't, you should have put a bullet in your head when you had a chance standing out there on 95th Street with that gun in your hand! Yes or no, Mr. Lane? I don't... Your Honor, my client has authorized me to enter a plea of not guilty. Now, Your Honor, on the question of bail. Save it, Mr. Jackson. There's no question of bail. The defendant is remanded to the Manhattan House of Detention. Next case. Just who I'm looking for. Oh, aren't you still on that health food kick? Busted. Please don't tell my wife. Uh, hey, it's on me. I'm paying. To what do I owe this honor? You're taking the case. Here. Have a Kit Kat for the road. No, thanks. I was amazed to see how fast you and your client developed such a rapport. It could be ex-client, the way this is going. What do you mean? Well, you were there. He doesn't want a lawyer. I'm going to go with an insanity defense. Why are you telling me this? Because we're brothers in the bond. <laughs> because the groundwork is there. Yeah, thanks. This guy is not going to stand up and say he was insane. And if he did, you'd get the shrinks to say he knew exactly what he was doing. Michael Lane has an impossible case. That's why he needs you, Professor. Excuse me. Hi. Are you Julie Bishop? Yeah. I'm Don Preston. Hi. It's my associate, Mayor Jane Preston. Hi. We're the lawyers representing Michael Lane. Sorry for your loss. If you were really sorry, you wouldn't be representing him. I can understand you feeling that way, Miss Bishop. Uh, th this will just take a second. When your husband was released from prison, why did you choose to stay in the same neighborhood where you lived before? How dare you? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself, both of you. Michael Lane shot my husband down like a dog in the street, and now you want to come over here and you want to ask me questions? I just want to talk to you about your husband. Why don't we talk about Michael Lane? How can you be the lawyer for such scum? Well, didn't your husband have a lawyer when he was charged with rape? He pled guilty. He went to prison, and he got help. And you stood by him. You could hit the road. We had a child. Don, let's go. This isn't going to get anywhere. It's all right. Hey, Mom, want to see a shot? I'll shoot you down here, okay? I'm going. He's I'm watching. Passing. I'm watching you. Berkeley, he shoots. Miss Bishop, that's Danny, huh? Yeah, that's my son. <sighs> what do you think your husband would have done if Michael Lane had raped Danny over there? Oh no, 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 we, no, no, no. Shut up! Your husband would have wanted to kill him, wouldn't he? You want to ask something? You ask why Michael Lane did such a terrible thing. Mrs. Bishop, my client's child was raped by your husband. She can barely function today. My husband paid his debt to society, and then he changed. Now he's dead, murdered by your client. You want to look? Take a look. Look at Danny. And you think about what that bastard did to him, huh? Jesus, Dylan. If she'd had a gun, she'd have shot you. I think that's true. MJ, I need your help. You need more than that, Don. You ought to be checked out. Get all the discovery from the DA, anything else you can think of. Run out every ground ball. Look at that kid. What kind of life is he going to have, thanks to our client? Our client has a daughter who's a hell of a lot worse off than that kid. All right, fine. Lane suffered, too. We all suffer. Life is not fair. But what he did was barbaric. It was eye for an eye justice, and it just isn't right, Don. I'm defending him. Christ. We do, MJ. We defend the Michael Lanes of the world. Oh, don't give me that professorial crap. Hey, look, our client's on trial for his life here. Don't you think he should have thought of that beforehand? He couldn't think. So he just killed. Maybe you should get your old job back at the DA's office, because what our client needs now is someone to go to war for him. Well, thank God you're here on your white horse to save the day. MJ, don't. I didn't ask to be here, you know? Dad called me. 
I came. Come on, Don. You expect me to believe you're here because of Grandpa? For your family? No. You're here because of Cheryl Rhodes, aren't you? Cheryl Rhodes is sitting up in Bedford Hills until deep into the next century, and this is another chance for you to get it right. What do you want me to say? I'm sorry? You want me to say I wish I'd done better? What do you, what do you want from me? Huh? I don't know what I want. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry. I just... This case, this man, Michael Lane, I... Don, I don't think I can defend him. You're not a parent, MJ. You don't know what it's like to lose a child. No, but I sure as hell know what it's like to lose a father too damn soon. You know, Ken was my brother. You didn't tell you, you should have pushed harder. You should have said, stay away from your family. They're all insane. But they're your family. My dad, I love my dad, hey, but he's always hovering, you know, it hasn't changed. And MJ, MJ is making me crazy. Why, because she isn't towing the Preston family line? No, Mom, because she took a moral position. Lawyers don't do that. Hey, oh. wise guy, we're having a legitimate argument here. Oh, now it's a legitimate argument. I thought she was driving you crazy. She is, because she's saying we're defending an eye for an eye type philosophy. And you're not? No. Because if they were, Mom, they'd have to say that their client shouldn't have murdered Bishop he should have just raped and sodomized him. Stephen, your sister is sitting here. I know what rape means, Mom. Yeah? What about sodomy? Stephen. Sodomy? What do you know about sodomy? Can you spell sodomy? Don, can we not? Preston Pizza. We deliver. Who have you been hanging out with? Shh, Dad. It's for you. Hello. Change. Now? Okay, I'll be right down. Is everything okay? I don't know. Where are you going? I gotta go to jail. Now? Now. You know, it's really weird plea bargain against you. Yeah, that's because I know how to call your bluff. You go, take the e felony and probation when I know the case has already been tracked down to a misdemeanor. You still think like a prosecutor, MJ. You never should have left the office. Why? You need some poor sucker to take over your weekend arraignment shift? Yeah, but <laughs> I don't see you as some hired gun working for... Killers. You can say it, Mitchell. Yeah, killers. I never figured you'd give them the family pressure. Family pressure, my ass. I wanted to work in that firm my entire life. Well, that's too bad, because I heard they got a primo spot opening up at the office. Oh, uh, yeah? What bureau? Homicide. And Broderick's been throwing your name around. My name? Yep. But since you're so happy with life on the dark side, I guess Broderick's going to have to find somebody else. Yeah. I guess so. Hey, MJ. Yeah? You're gonna have to work a little more on that poker face. Good night, Mitchell. <sighs> Mr. Lane, I came right down. What is it? She wrote to me. Who? Tracy. My, my daughter. But you broke. Just read it. She loves you. <laughs> Need your help. Murdered one of your sons, what would you do? 
If you're asking me where I want to kill him, the answer is yes, of course. Yeah, but you wouldn't do it, would you? You wouldn't just murder someone. No, but I wouldn't kid myself about what I felt. <laughs> yeah. MJ, why did you leave the district attorney's office to join me? Because Dad would have wanted me to, if it was with you. You have to be here because you believe in being a defense attorney, just as he did. Oh, I, I do. And your heart? You've got such a big, good, idealistic heart, MJ. You get stirred up by injustice, and that's good. But you've got to decide which injustice you want to fight. Michael Lane's life is on the line here. I know. got the 61, the DD-5s, the autopsy report. It's also got all the notebooks, videos, and photos from Lane's apartment. That's only because your uncle and I are related. Oh, and those SAE boys fall in line. Bula, bula. You got anything on the gun, or do I have to give you the secret handshake and tell you the name of the founder's dog? It was reported stolen in 94. We're working on the dealer. Hey, how's that psych defense doing, then? Professor making any progress? We'll let you know. Yeah, hold. MJ. Mm hmm? Did Don tell you the name of the dog? MJ? It's MJ. Listen, I'm checking out this discovery and... MJ, it's 11.30. I've had a long day. Can't this wait? No, if I'm supposed to run out every ground ball, then this is a smash to second, Dom. What are you talking about, MJ? Lane's wife is dead, right? Yeah. She died 12 years ago from cancer. Does he have a second daughter? What? A second daughter? I'm watching these home videos, and it seems like there's another girl. Has he ever mentioned her? No, he hasn't. Hi, I'm here to see Tracy Lane. I'll need name, address, and a picture ID. Mm -hmm. Name and address here. Tracy? Hi. My name is Mary Jane Preston. I'm an attorney. Oh, yeah, they, they said. Yeah, and I'm working with your father. I know. He sent me a letter. Do you want to read it? No, no, I'm sure it's private.
says, um, he loves me, but he had to do something bad. And he says that I should try not to think about that or about him. But of course I do. Think about bad things. He says I should just take care of myself and try and get better. Does your father love you? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, that's what fathers do. They love their daughters. Hmm. I used to write him these great stories. They were, they were great. You know? Once there was a little princess who lived in a beautiful castle. But no one could get in. So did you want to ask me something, or...? I just wanted to see you. Well, I just thought maybe you'd want to. Why'd you come? <laughs> do you have a sister? Of course I do. You're my sister? She's my sister? And we're all sisters, aren't we? Take one of the usual. Just who I'm looking for. Ooh, yum. Uh, uh, sorry to eat and run, but uh, or I'll get to the tombs. Did you tell your niece the name of the dog? What dog? Uh, never mind. Hey, I still haven't gotten notice of your psychiatric defense. What's doing? Nothing's doing. Well, did you see all the discovery I gave MJ? I checked. How come I'm getting it so early and without a fight? I'm a nice guy. No, you're not. John, John, we've known each other for a long time. And for a prosecutor, I almost respect you. But right now, I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing trying to make this case go away with an insanity plea? Look, I saw the pictures of what Bishop did to his kid. I have a daughter, too. Oh, please. If he has every break the law can give him, I'll take my murder conviction, and I'll sleep easier when I win. And I will win, Don. My alpha brother. How did you know Jack Bishop was back in the neighborhood? Megan's law. I mean, he's a convicted sex offender. I knew the six years were almost up. I called the cops. They had a list at the precinct. So you were very upset. What do you think? I think I'm trying to make a case that you were temporarily insane, but you've blown off seeing my psychiatrist three times now. How many times do I have to tell you I wasn't insane? So you're not interested in that defense? No, I'm not. No. All I'm saying is the law can work for you. I don't understand how. How? I win? And what, I wind up locked up in a mental institution for the rest of my life? That wasn't me. I wasn't crazy. But maybe you were in the eyes of the law. <sighs> the law is bullshit. Yeah, people do ugly, messy things to each other, okay? The law is there to help us deal with the mess. Do you have a daughter, Mr. Preston? Yeah. What's your daughter's name? Kelly. You picture your Kelly waking up in the middle of the night, every night screaming. And you, you hold her, but you can't comfort her. You imagine your little baby, the light of your life, disappearing for days, and you finding her in some motel room somewhere. That's the mess. And the law does not touch it. It gives us Jack Bishop, plea bargaining his way out of jail, winding up on the same damn block, right in my fucking face. It can help save you and your family. What family?
What about your other daughter, Mr. Lane? What are you talking about? Your other daughter, where is she? I don't know. I just don't know. Sorry I'm late. Have a seat, Mr. President. Don't give me any excuses about the D-Trade. I'm not in the mood. Your Honor, I would never stoop that low. Yes, you would. Hey, John. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Are we looking at an insanity defense here? Uh, Judge, we've been thinking about that, but unfortunately... The uh, defendant refuses to be examined by the people's psychiatrist, Your Honor. Is that right, Mr. Preston? Lane's not buying that defense. That wasn't a rhetorical question. I think attorney-client privilege makes it one, Your Honor. Then maybe your client's too crazy for an insanity defense. Should it be 7.30? Well, 7.30 would be a waste of time, Judge. He's competent to stand trial, no question. Well, then I have no choice but to strike out any psychiatric defense. Uh, in that case, uh, John, what I'm thinking is, if I can get Lane to go for it, will you come down and count to manslaughter? Man one, I can talk to the DA about that. Yeah, you can sell it to Broderick. I think we can make a deal. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not in my courtroom. Who the hell do you think I am? I look like Monty Hall to you? <laughs> no, sir. No, I, I think you, you look like someone who wants to see justice done in this case. Well, I don't give a damn what you think or what Mr. Broderick thinks. There will be no plea bargain here. Now, wait a minute. Jack Bishop got a sweetheart plea bargain seven years ago in this very building for raping Lane's daughter. And that's just fine. You know damn well I wasn't the judge on the Bishop case. I didn't say you were. If Jack Bishop didn't get a deal seven years ago, maybe none of us would be in this room today. Now, if your client wants to plead guilty, Mr. Preston, he'll have to eat the entire indictment. And the sentence would be? What he deserves for murder, not a day more or a day less. If you've got something to say, Mr. Preston, say it. Not today, Judge. Then get ready to pick a jury tomorrow. Your trial starts at 10 a.m. That's not unless you've got a class to teach. Don't worry about your jury profiles, Don. Worry about getting 12 fair-minded people. I'm not looking for fair-minded people, Dad. I want jurors that'll be tipping my way from Jump Street. Like Charles Bronson or Dirty Harry? I'm sure John would use a peremptory on Clint. <laughs> He'd probably get Bronson for cause. I gotta find people like that who've been victims, neither fought back or wish they did. Mothers with young kids, maybe, or fathers who feel Lane is some kind of hero. The victim-type jury you're looking for may end up identifying more with Jack Bishop than his poor widow. You think so? That's the way it usually goes. See, when Ken conducted a voir dire, he tried to get a prospective juror to look him right in the eye. If he didn't, watch out for him. If he looked right back at you, I'm from Missouri, show me. That's the kind of juror you want. He'll listen to you. Why don't you pick the jury? Because it's your case, and it's more fun this way. You may proceed, Mr. Preston. Good morning. As you know, my client has been accused of murder and criminal possession of a weapon. But right now, as Judge Williams will tell you, he's presumed innocent. Anyone have a problem with that? 
anyone feel that the reason he's here is because he's guilty? Jack Bishop was himself convicted of a serious crime. Do you believe that makes his life worthless, Ms. Clarkson? No. No, you, you wouldn't just say he didn't deserve to be alive. Who cares? No, of course not. Ms. Reynolds, you said in your questionnaire that you have a daughter. How old is she? She'll be 11 next month. Oh, I have one about that old, too. That's a great age, huh? usually. <laughs> so when you look at the defendant sitting here and you think of your own daughter, do you say to yourself, I could never be in a position like that? Or do you say, there but for the grace of God go I? There but for the grace of God. Yeah. Does a person have a right to defend his family? Coleman. It's more like a responsibility. That's the way I see it. As a father. Right. As a father. OK, Mr. Coleman, let's say someone did attack your family, and it was a violent attack. And you saw them on the streets a couple of days later. What would you do? I guess I'd call the cops. So they can do their job, right? Right. OK. Let's say the perpetrator was arrested sent to prison, and after a number of years, they're released. And you see them, you run into them at the bus stop. Would you pull out a gun and blow them away because you're still angry? I might want to, but... Yes, but would you do it? No, sir. No, why not? W wouldn't you call that defending your family? No. I'd call that murder. Oh. Murder. Again. Uh, no, actually, I'd like to speak to you. Um, do all visitors sign in here? Yes, they do. Including family members? Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys don't know of a Jesse Lane lives around here, do you? No. So I was just coming from the grocery store, and I was standing right here when I heard the first shot. I turned, and I looked, and I saw this guy with a gun in his hand. Right here. Do you see that man in the court here today? Sure do. Right over there. Indicating the defendant. You may resume your seat. What happened next? Well, he kept shooting and shooting. Bam, bam, bam. It, it was so fast. And the dead guy, he just fell right on the steps. Did you see what the defendant did next? Yes, he, he just turned around. He looked at me, and he sat down on the stoop like he wasn't going nowhere. Did he seem in a disturbed state when he fired the gun? My con ed man reads the meter with more emotion than this guy, OK? He was cool. Your Honor, move to strike. Just answer the question that's asked, sir. OK, Mr. Sanders. After you saw the defendant shoot Jack Bishop, did you also see him do something else? Yes, I did. He, he sort of smiled. Your witness. You're not a mind reader, are you, Mr. Sanders? Oh, no, sir. I'm a retired sanitation worker. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you, you've never met Mr. Lane before, have you? No, sir. Never had a conversation with him? No, sir. Never ran into him on 95th Street there? He lives right in your neighborhood. You could have bumped into him on Broadway. No, I never did. So you don't know him, Mr. Lane? And you don't have any knowledge of his life, do you? No, I don't. And you don't know what he was thinking on June 15th, 1997, do you? No, I don't. Oh, of course not. And you couldn't possibly know what he was feeling inside that day, could you? No, I couldn't. No. Now, Mr. Sanders, just to get this completely clear, you didn't know Michael Lane in March of 1990, did you? No. Oh, so you also would have no idea what the defendant was feeling right after Mr. Bishop raped and sodomized his daughter? No, I, I couldn't. You want to hazard a guess? Objection. Sustain. Nothing further, then. Officer Perez, 
like to show you People's Exhibit 7 and ask if you recognize it. This is the gun the defendant handed over to me on that day. He was sitting on the stoop. He said, I just killed Jack Bishop, and then he gestured. Towards? A body and a whole lot of blood. What did you do with the gun? I vouched it and sent it to ballistics for testing. And what were the results of the ballistics tests with respect to the five bullets recovered by the medical examiner? They all came from this gun. This is the murder weapon. Excuse me. Do you know if a Jesse Lane lives here? In there, hi. Yeah. She's in there now? No. I don't know. Oh. Okay, thanks. This is People's Exhibit 7. Do you recognize it? Oh, yeah. This is definitely the piece I sold to that guy. Indicating the defendant. And Mr. Morano, how can you be sure? In my business, I make it a point never to forget a face. When did you sell this gun to the defendant? June sometime. And what, if anything, did the defendant say when he bought the gun from you? We're in Flannery's, you know, in Columbus. He told me something came up. He needed a piece. Do you recall his exact words? Oh, yeah, definitely. I need a gun, and I need it now. Thank you. You sell illegal guns for a living, don't you, Mr. Morano? <laughs> Your Honor, instruct the witness to answer. The people have given him immunity for these crimes. It's the least he can do. Mr. Morano, answer the question. Whatever. Sure. That's what I do. I sell illegal guns. And you cut a deal to testify here, didn't you? My lawyer did. And what was the deal? Consideration on an open case. The state's going to give you a walk on a gun case? I hope so. <laughs> well, that's nice of the people. Watch it, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Lane is a school teacher, junior high history. How'd he hear about you? You haven't been hanging around the schoolyard, have you? No. He came into Flannery's. People know I'm there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he heard somehow. You know, word of mouth. Maybe the kid's in his class. You said before you never forget a face. What'd you see on Michael Lane's face that day? Was he upset? Oh, that's right. He was upset. Well, you have an excellent memory, don't you, Mr. Morano? Yes, I do. He was very upset. No further questions. Any redirect, Mr. Jackson? No, Your Honor. At this time, the people rest. Come in. Hi, guys. I want you to meet Jessie Lane. She's our client's older daughter. Hi, Jessie. I'm Don Preston. It's my, my father, Lawrence. Pleased Hi. to meet you. Come on in, please. Good hustle, Bunky. Yeah, found her address at the signing book at the hospital. She'd been visiting Tracy. You want to take a seat, Jesse? Uh, no, that's all right, thanks. Oh, um, why don't you tell them where you've been living? Lately in this sort of squat on an avenue, see? See, I, I play in this band called Blacklight. You've probably never heard of us. No, I haven't. You guys any good? I think so. Does your father know where you're living? No. Does he have any contact with you? Not really. No, I mean, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't really want to see me. Because? Because after the incident, my dad kind of checked out. How did he treat you? <laughs> yeah, it was dirt. Couldn't do anything right. When I was 16, I just said, fuck it. I mean, didn't have a dad or a mom. So you left? Ran away to the village. Did you know any people there? Yeah, right. Did you ever tell your dad where you were? My father hated my guts. Why? I don't know. Maybe because I wouldn't wallow 24-7 over my mom and Tracy. I mean, all I wanted was a fucking life, you know? So weird. And I can't believe he actually did it. All those years he said he would. He did. Your father.
father talked about killing Jack Bishop. He didn't talk about anything else. When's the last time you spoke to him? It's probably three years ago. I called him on his birthday, and I said, happy birthday, Daddy. But then he hung up. What's going on? Didn't I tell you? Hello, Daddy. How the hell could you bring her here? She's out of my life. She has nothing to do with this. Yes, I do. No, you don't. You drove me out, Dad. She ran away. What's the matter, Jessica? Rock and roll band died? You see, I know a little more than you think. And you know a little less. Yeah, I don't know how you could pull that trigger. Is it possible that you don't remember your sister at all? Can you ever forget that little face? How happy she was every, every single second of every day? I remember. And you, you were a big sister. She worshipped you. I know. You don't know. Look at you, you're a mess, you know that? You were a wreck. I think she looks fine. Well, hiding under all of this greasy hair and makeup and self-laceration. She can't understand. Look at Why her. Why don't you look at yourself? I mean, look at what you did. You're the one that fucked up, not me. I mean, you're the one leaving Tracy in the hospital and me out on the streets. Dad, you can't even see what's in front of you. I did the only thing that I could. Oh, Dad, it wasn't the only thing you could have Oh, really? Done. Then why don't you just get out of here? No. Get out of here. I don't want you around if you can forget that I won't, easily. Dad, because I'm not forgetting and I'm not running. Not anymore, I'm not. Fine. You won't. I will. Guard! On the gate! That went well. I think we should put Jesse on the stand. You're joking. How does that help us? She testifies about her dad. But she ran away from her dad. It doesn't matter. Let's the jury see Lane as a father and a victim. Yeah, but they'll know she's just trying to save dad's neck. And Jackson's definitely going to get her to talk about how much the old man wanted to whack Bishop. Trust me, the jury's going to love her. Mr. Preston? Your Honor, the defense calls Jessica Lane. What the hell do you think you're doing? I don't want her on the stand. No, Please. not my daughter. Oh, Mom, she has do nothing to do with it. Is there a problem, Mr. Preston? No, Judge. Well, I have one, Your Honor. Jessica Lane wasn't on any witness list. She just became available yesterday, Judge. I'd Please. like an offer of proof on that, Your Honor. If you've got an objection to specific question, Mr. Jackson, make it. Now, let's go. You should have told me you were going to do this. Mr. Lane. I don't want my daughter on the stand. This is my problem, not hers. Ms. Lane, can you describe your father? What was he like before March 14th, 1990? 1990? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Necessary background, Judge. Overruled. You can answer, Ms. Lane. Um, he was a great dad. I mean, his, his whole life was my sister and me. And all he ever wanted to do was raise his two kids right. You know? Remember, we, we called him the answer man, because he was a teacher, you know? And, um, I mean, he, he could get down on you if you screwed up, but boy, was he there for you. I mean, all the time, like a rock, you know, just. I remember he, um, he used to love to hear me sing. And did he change after March 14th, 1990? Oh, we all did. I mean, it was, it was worse for him, for him and Tracy, because, I mean, he couldn't protect his daughter. It just made him feel worthless. Objection to how he felt. Sustained. The answer stricken. Ms. Lane, please describe how your father's behavior changed after March 14th, 1990. Well, he, he wouldn't sleep, he wouldn't eat, he would, I mean, he would just go for days living off coffee or beer. Did it affect his behavior? What do you think? I'm asking you. Well, he, he wouldn't go to school, wouldn't even answer the phone. He would just, just obsess over what happened to Tracy. Did he ever hit you? No, never. I mean, if you were a table or a chair or something, you kind of had to watch out. He smashed up the house. But, I mean, Mr. Preston, you got to understand, this happened, like, like, right after he came in on her in the bathtub. What did he see in the bathtub? Well, Tracy, she was, um, 
She was bleeding in the water. Her wrist had been slashed, and... You, you don't know what it's like to come in on somebody. I mean, your own daughter, for God's sake, who's just, who's just tried to carve himself up. I mean, so, so what if, if he got drunk or angry? And after Tracy was in the hospital, did things improve? No. No. He just, he lost interest in everything. Including you. Yeah, especially me. I mean, he, he couldn't care less. How did you know? I would leave for days at a time, and, and when I'd come back, I mean, he wouldn't even ask me where I'd been. Why'd you run away, Jesse? Objection, he Judge. Just kept come on. Getting crazier Miss and Lane, crazier stop and crazier. Now, Mr. Preston, didn't I strike your insanity defense? Yes, but it goes to the defendant's state of mind, Judge. Not at the time of the murder. Objection sustained. The last answer is stricken. Now, Mr. Preston, anything further? Jesse, look at your father. Did you have any contact with him after you ran away? No. But... I mean, I, I keep thinking that maybe if I hadn't left, he wouldn't have done it. And all of those... Judge, the witness answered the question. No, she didn't, Your Honor. Let her finish, please. Go ahead and finish, Miss Lane. All those things that I did, I mean, those are the stupid things and cheap things. I mean, all I wanted was for him to look at me. Because for so long in my father, all there was was this ache for revenge. And I thought, when is, when is there ever going to be time for me to? I don't understand. I do. I do, Dad. I mean... I look at you, and I just wanted you to know that there was somebody in this world who still loved you, and that that is why I came back, because I love you. And you, you don't have to be alone anymore, Daddy. Nothing further. Let's talk about June 15th, 1997. You didn't see your father on that date, did you, Ms. Lane? No. Did you see him any time that week? No. Oh. Well, how about that month? No. When was the first time you saw your father this year? That would be yesterday, when I visited him in jail. So, you can't tell this jury what your father's state of mind was on June 15th, 1997, the date that Jack Bishop was shot to death, can you? What do you mean? I mean, you don't know if he was emotionally disturbed that day or cool as a cucumber, do you? No, I don't. Oh. Huh. Your father hated Jack Bishop, didn't he? Yes. In fact, he hated him so much, he wished he was dead, isn't that right? Yes. Didn't your father tell you that if he ever got the chance, He'd kill Jack Bishop. Did your father tell you he was planning to kill Jack Bishop, Ms. Lane? Ms. Lane. Yes. Nothing further. You may step down, Miss Lane. that Mitchell told you that we have a job opening up in a homicide. You interested? No, I've got a job. Oh, I know. And I know you love your family. But, MJ, you got the makings of a great prosecutor. And look what you're doing. You're up there defending a dead-bang killer. 
Is that really what you want to do for the rest of your life? Think about it. You want Lane on the stand? What else do we have, Dad? Lane won't let us put on shrinks or trauma experts, so insanity is out. How else do we tell Lane's story? But his story also includes shooting Jack Bishop. Now, Jesse created sympathy for him. He'll get up there and he'll undermine it. Still, Lane gets us back to the original crime. I mean, how badly can he hurt us? The question is, how badly does he hurt himself? Mr. Lane, what happened on March 14th, 1990? Objection, Your Honor. Jack Bishop is not on trial here. Oh, rule, you'll have your opportunity to cross, Mr. Jackson. On that day, Jack Bishop raped my daughter. How do you know that? You weren't a witness, were you? No, I wasn't. So how do you know what he did? For God's sakes, he admitted it when he pled guilty, right here in this very building. Mr. Lane, what exactly did Mr. Bishop admit doing to your daughter? I have here the transcript of his guilty plea if you need to refresh your recollection. I don't need to. He said he put his penis in her mouth and in her vagina and in her anus. And what precisely was the crime to which Mr. Bishop pled guilty? Attempted rape. Attempted rape. There was a plea bargain. The DA was afraid that Tracy wouldn't hold up on the stand. Mr. Lane, how old was Tracy when this happened to her? Eight. And how did what happened to her on March 14th, 1990, affect her? She's 14 years old now, and she lives in another world. She's tried to kill herself twice just to get out of this one. So I would say that's how it's affected her. It's pretty damn well ruined her life. All because of that man. Jack Bishop was a monster and didn't deserve to live. You don't understand! No, you don't understand! Jack Bishop did not only destroy my daughter's life, he destroyed mine! Objection, move to strike! He's not a monster! Madam, sit down. Sit down and don't say another word. Sit down. And Mr. Lane, sit down or I'll hold you in contempt. I want order in this courtroom. Counsel at the sidebar. Your Honor, this is outrageous and irrelevant. Who's on trial here? Save your speeches for the jury, John. Listen to me. That's a good question. I'd like to have an answer. Now, you listen to me. Whoa. Who do you think you're talking to? You talk to me with that tone of voice again, Mr. Preston, and I'll have your ass. But, Judge... No buts. Or you have your father in here representing you on a contempt charge. You got that? All my client has is his story. You've got to let him tell it, Judge. Don't tell him what I got to do, Mr. Preston. Step back. No, stand back. I said step back. Jury that objects to sustain, strike the last remark on the record. Mr. Lane, where were you on March 14th, 1990 at approximately 3 p.m.? On my way to pick up Tracy after school, like always, but... But what, Mr. Lane? I stopped on the way. Why did you stop? Because I was stupid. Oh. I, um, realized that I had forgotten to pick up my blue suit from the cleaners. And I had an assembly the next day, and I needed that suit. If I didn't get it then, I would have to go uh, all the way back across town, so I went back and got it. That made me five minutes late for Tracy. I got to the schoolyard just in time to see her being dragged to the court. She was crying. She was screaming, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! And then what happened? I chased the car. I couldn't catch it. Minutes early. The father is supposed to protect his child, Mr. Preston, and I couldn't. My baby was screaming and afraid, and I couldn't help her. That's all I could think of. She's afraid, and that man hurt her. 
Mr. Lane, what happened in June of 1997 when you heard Jack Bishop was released from prison? I didn't know what to do. I didn't. Jesse was gone. Tracy was in the hospital. The apartment was empty. Every room, every bed. So I drank. I drank, Mr. Press, just to feel numb. Where did you drink? Uh, at um, Flannery's at Columbus. And did you meet a Frank Morano there? Yes, I did. And what did he do? He offered to sell me a gun. And what did you say? No, no. At first. But then that night I went to visit Tracy at the hospital. They had her in isolation because she had had another episode. She was all drugged up, sedated, her eyes were glassy. They had her in restraints so she wouldn't try to kill herself again. My sweet little girl. I bought the gun the next day. Nothing further. I'll make this brief, Mr. Lane. Did you kill Jack Bishop? Yes, I did. You weren't drunk at the time, were you? No, I was sober. And you knew what you were doing, didn't you? You bet. You weren't trying to wound him, were you? With five bullets in the heart? No, I wanted him dead. And you'd been thinking about this for a long time, hadn't you? You bet. And you succeeded, didn't you? I guess. Sure you did. You shot him down in cold blood, right? Yes. In cold blood. Nothing further. All right. Then we'll take a recess here. Sometimes the saints sing, sometimes the bells ring, sometimes I cannot help a thing I do, and I wish, and I wish it never happened. Yeah, there's more. Sometimes I want to die. Sometimes I want to cry. Sometimes I want to fly. And I wish it never happened. I didn't finish it. No, it's wonderful. No, it's not. No, oh, it is. Darling, no, it is. It is. Jesse said I should give it to you. And... I don't know. It's no good. It is beautifully written. <sighs> I wish... I wish that I could.
I love you so much, Daddy. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. It's extreme, it's dangerous, but I wanna put Mrs. Bishop on the stand. Extreme and dangerous are understatements. And Jackson will object. Why should he? He'll think she only brings more sympathy for the dead husband. And she does? What does she bring to you? Passion. Bunky saw it, she knows. If this backfires into a conviction, you're gonna be second guessed for months. This isn't a classroom, Don. A man's life is at stake here. Mr. Preston? I want to go inside. Oh, no, uh, I, I don't think that's oh, Dad, 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 it might make a difference to one juror, just one. Your Honor, the defense calls Mrs. Julie Bishop to the stand. What do you mean? I'm not going to go up there and testify for him. Do you have an objection, Mr. Jackson? No, Your Honor. Well, then, Mrs. Bishop, you'll have to take the stand. Now, Mrs. Bishop, what is it we don't understand? Mr. Preston, are you inviting this witness to make a speech? No, I'm asking her a question, Your Honor, and I didn't hear an objection from Mr. Jackson. Well, Mr. Jackson, is there one? No, Your Honor. You spoke out. What do you want to say, Mrs. Bishop? I can't just sit there and watch you crucify my husband like this, like all he was in his life was an evil monster. You don't understand how upset it made him at what he did. His life was one long nightmare about what happened to him. What happened to him? You think he did this for fun? He couldn't help himself, Mr. Preston. Because it had been done to him. That's right. And if he were alive today, he would kill me for saying this. But from the time he was five until he was ten years old, he was repeatedly abused and molested by his uncle over and over again. And he was just a boy. Like Mr. Lane's daughter was just a girl. It tortured him. And it made him do awful things, OK? So it wasn't his fault? No, I didn't say that. He took responsibility, he went to prison, and he changed. Jack changed. He wasn't the same person? No, he wasn't. So when your husband got out of prison, that must have been a happy day, huh? Yeah, it was. You brought him home to your own front doorstep there on West 95th Street? Is that right? That's right. Did you contemplate maybe moving out of the neighborhood? No. Didn't you think maybe there'd be a problem? I can live anywhere I please to live. Did that have to be five blocks from where Mr. Lane lived? That is our home. My son goes to school there, and I have friends there. Look at him, Mrs. Bishop, right there in front of you. Don't you feel ashamed? Why should I? I'm not prostituting myself like you are. I'm just asking you how you feel being in the same room knowing what your husband did to his daughter, and his daughter doomed to a life in and out of hospitals. How do you think she feels? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Preston's testifying again. Objection sustained. If you've got a question, Mr. Preston, ask it. Mrs. Bishop, you love your son Danny, don't you? Yes, I do. Is it fair to say you love him very much? Yes. And you'd do anything for him, wouldn't you? Protect him? Defend him? He's my son. But you didn't get your chance, did you, when Michael Lane came knocking at your door? No, I didn't. 
Did you think Mr. Lane was defending his child that day? No, I don't. Did you think he was protecting her? No, I think it was revenge. And you want revenge too, don't you? That is right. Because you didn't get your chance that day, did you? He didn't have the guts, the guts, to come into my house. I hope he gets what he deserves. And what is that, Mrs. Bishop? What does Michael Lane deserve? He deserves to die, okay? Are you happy? What about his children? He should have thought about them before. Before? Before he came into my house with a gun and destroyed my family. What about me? Huh? You should be killed. Maybe you'd like to throw the switch yourself. I want him to bleed to death like Jack did on the steps. I want his mouth open. I want his eyes rolling. What do you think of that, huh? That's what you deserve, you son of a bitch! Teresa. Would that be sufficient revenge, Mrs. Bishop? That's right. Not your Never! Fault. It's not your fault. He did it for me. He loves me. He did it for me. Me. It's all my fault. Mr. Preston? Where does it end? You kill my son, I kill yours. You rape my daughter, I rape yours. We all know what Michael Lane did. We all heard what Mrs. Bishop would like to do. And it's ugly, isn't it? I mean, is that what we want, to live in a world where bloodlust rules over all? You know, so much of the time in life, we don't know what to do, what's right, what's wrong. But just for a moment, forget all about the lawyers, the judges, the objections, all that stuff, and just put yourself in Michael Lane's shoes. March 14th, 1990, it's a beautiful day. Sun shining, you're rushing to pick your daughter up from school. You're running a little late. She's probably going to ask you to take her to the YV. That's what she calls the yogurt and video store. It's kind of an after school ritual. Cookies and cream, that's her favorite flavor. She always waits right at the same bench for you, always jumps straight up in the air when she sees you coming. But you look, and she's not there. And suddenly, you hear a scream, you turn, and you see this man jerk her into a car. She's screaming as the door slams shut, and then the car speeds off. You want to follow, but you can't, because you're blocked by traffic. In fact, there's nothing you can do. Nothing at all. Now, Tracy Lane survived the rape and attack perpetrated on her by Jack Bishop. But she'll never be the same. Her father, Michael, wanted justice. What'd he get? A deal cut by the district attorney's office. A deal so outrageous it put this rapist back on the same block where he committed the crime, while Tracy and Jesse and Michael Lane served what is, in effect, a life sentence. 
Don't you want to find a way to end this circle of violence? To heal the wounds? To break the pattern? You know, this is not an easy case. It's not black and white. I know, you know, I, I know that you see that and feel that as I have. Now, if you want to, you can punish Michael Lane. But whatever the punishment, it'll never be worse than what has already been done to him and his family. We can never take that hurt away. That's the real crime. That's, that's the real tragedy. Thank you. Mr. Preston is dead wrong. This trial is about one thing and one thing only, what happened to Jack Bishop out there on West 95th Street that night, and that's murder. And yes, it is black and white, and yes, it is bad. And the real tragedy is what will happen to our society if crimes like this go unpunished. Civilization, the way that you and I live, is on trial here today. You people, each and every one of you sitting here, you're in the unique position of being able to send a message. The message is that we have laws. And those laws will be followed because those laws are all that separate us from the barbarians. Now, we, we all heard Mr. Preston talk about the facts. Well, facts. The facts are very simple. You have an eyewitness, you have a murder weapon, and you have the defendant's own words. He sat right here and he said, yes, I did it. I killed him. I shot him down in cold blood. You heard it. Don't deny what you heard and saw here, and don't be seduced by the lure of vigilante justice, because that is not justice. It is a tragedy what the Lane family has suffered, but that does not excuse murder. That does not justify murder. Michael Lane doesn't deserve your sympathy. He deserves to be punished for what he did, for what he did. He walked up to a man on West 95th Street. He took out a gun and he shot that man to death. That is what he did. Now, you people here today, you are the judges of the facts. Now, not, not Judge Williams, not Mr. Preston, and not me, you. I ask you to look at those facts. I ask you to examine those facts. And I ask you to return a verdict of guilty. Guilty of murder. Thank you. What time is it? 10 minutes since you last asked. If they come back before we finish this coffee, we're in trouble. They're back. Jerry reached the verdict. We have not, Your Honor. Is there some problem? We understand the facts, Your Honor. It's just, how do we pass judgment? It just feels in that room to us that, that coming to a decision is beyond us. You have a responsibility to this court, to Michael Lane, to the people of New York, and quite frankly, to yourselves to come up with a verdict. Now, I know it's difficult, but it can be done. Try harder. Listen to each other. I want you to re-examine your own views. I'm therefore directing you to continue your deliberations.
you have a verdict, Mr. Foreman? We do, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? On the first count, criminal possession of a weapon, what is your verdict? We find the defendant guilty. On the second count, murder in the second degree, what is your verdict? Your Honor, we've been deliberating for days, and the verdict is we're hopelessly deadlocked. Are you telling me you can't reach a verdict on the murder count? Your Honor, we've gone over this a thousand times. But the truth is, the 12 of us are never going to be able to reach a unanimous verdict on the murder charge. You're discharged. Lawyers, meet me in my chambers immediately. Bring your calendars with you. I say, don't do it. What do you mean? I mean, don't retry the case. Are you serious? You see how this man has suffered. You saw his daughter sitting in the front row. You even saw Mrs. Bishop on the stand. They're all in pain. Can you really put them through it again? Yes, I can. OK. Fine. We're ready. We'll go on and on retrying this case forever if we have to. We hung this jury. We'll hang the next one and the next. And maybe we'll find one that acquits, because we will never give up. But this case is truly over now, and you know it. What about justice? Aren't you interested in justice? This is justice. Dropping a murder charge. It's the right thing to do. For whom? For Jack Bishop lying dead in 94th Street? Or his wife? Surely not for her. Lane isn't getting a walk on this. Williams will sentence him into the next century on the weapon. You and I have fought and battled all our lives and disagreed on a hell of a number of things. But right now in this case, the jury has decided for us. Listen to the jury. In your heart, you know they're right. Come in. OK, I'm going to hold off sentencing on the weapons charge. When can both sides be ready for retrial? Well, now, what's, what's November like? November. Can the people be ready by then? We uh, won't be ready, Judge. Uh, we're not retrying the case. Excuse me? Did you say what I think you said? Because if you did. What? What are you going to do? You're not running my office. I'm still the district attorney. I'm the one who decides which cases are to bring. You're making a mistake. No, he's not. He's saying that we spent enough of the taxpayers' money on this case already. We got a conviction on the weapons charge. Sentence him on that. Don't worry, I will. I'm going to hang him on it. Don't you people want to see a resolution to this case? But what do you think this has been? Sometimes the people work it out better than the lawyers and the judges if you give them half a chance. And we did. That's what this whole damn case was about. The people are being screwed. The people are being set up like sitting ducks. And I think the whole damn thing stinks. And what stinks here is that Lane was judged by a jury of his peers, and you don't like what they came up with. No, I don't like it. It was nothing but a compromise. Right. They found a way to solve the problem. And if the rest of the people don't like Mr. Broderick's decision, that's their prerogative. They don't have to vote for him. <laughs> I should be so lucky. Maybe then I could get a cushy job like the rest of you. <laughs> Mr. Lane, the case is over. What about the retrial? There won't be one. Judge Williams will sentence you on the gun charge next month. And given that he's a tough judge and how he feels about the case, you're looking at the max, which is three and a half to seven. But then, 
You're a free man. I don't believe it. It's the truth, Mr. Lane. Mr. Preston. Thank you. Thank you for everything. So thank you. Thank you. Take care of Trace? I will. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. job, MJ. And I know you've been a bit busy this week, but have you given any further thought to our conversation? Mm -hmm. yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a terrific opportunity. But? Well, those guys, you know, they'd, they'd fall apart without me. <laughs> Plus, my name's already on the door. I understand. With Broderick? Oh, nothing special. Just some job offer in homicide with a $10,000 bump. <laughs> what do you think, Dad? Sounds like a cheap, underhanded negotiating ploy. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we should think about locking her up with a long term deal. We? What about your teaching gig at Columbia? Some people do both, you know. Wonderful. Let's talk about it over lunch. But you're buying. I put you through law school and now I have to feed you? <laughs> You're worth it. <laughs> <laughs>